Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. This is part two of my anti-aging skincare routine. Now I posted part one, which was my morning skincare routine. That one is a longer video than this one because I did a longer intro kind of explaining all the different kinds of ingredients that I look for in my skincare, why I choose, what I choose, um, all the other things that I've done. It'll answer probably 99% of the questions that you guys are going to have after watching this video. I really encourage you to go over and watch that video video. I'll put the link to it right up here as well as in the information box below this video. I'm not wearing any makeup today because I wanted you to be able to see my actual 54 year old skin. This is what I do in the evening to take care of my skin. Usually I will have on a full face of makeup and my evening skincare starts with removing the makeup from the day. So I tend to use a double or triple cleanse method. So first product for doing my cleanse at night, I've been using this Yes to Coconuts Ultra Hydrating Melting Cleanser. It's like an oily kind of gel and I put that on dry skin. This is great at getting off even waterproof mascara, all my eye makeup, all my regular makeup. You can see in the video it's all just melting right away. Last year I was using a konjac sponge. Um, this year I've switched and this year I'm using something called the Wonder Cloth. It is supposed to just remove your makeup with just water. I don't use it that way. I find that using just this and water does not remove all my makeup. But when I use the Yes to Coconuts product and rub my face with this, boy does that really remove the makeup as you can see in the video how much is on the cloth. The other thing that I love about these cloths is that they rinse clean right away so that you can just rinse all the makeup right out of it. So I just hang it up to dry. I use it probably two to three days in a row and then I have like three or four of them so I always have them in rotation going into the wash and coming back out nice and clean. For the next step in the evening cleanse I use the Mad Hippie Face Cleanser. It does have jojoba oil, green tea, macadamia oil, and orchid extract. I take one squirt of that and massage it around my face and gently rubbing my eyelashes to remove any excess mascara or waterproof liner that's left behind. I also use the Wonder Cloth again because the Wonder Cloth is exfoliating. So I wet the Wonder Cloth and I give myself a mini exfoliating facial massage working that in small circular motions all around my face and including my lips. And to my great surprise, I see how much makeup is actually left on my face after the first makeup removing cleanse. So with the cloth, I can really see that I've gotten all the makeup off. Then I pat my face with a soft microfiber towel. I do leave it slightly damp because damp skin will absorb the ingredients from the anti-aging lotions that I'm going to use much, much better. Another step that I do afterwards, I use the Thayer's Alcohol-Free Cucumber Witch Hazel Toner. I'll sprinkle a little on a cotton round, rub that around my face. I actually had stopped doing this when I first started with this cloth because I felt like I was getting my face so squeaky clean with no makeup left that I didn't need this step anymore. And that was when my pores started bothering me. I noticed that my pores were getting huge. I didn't know why. It was driving me crazy. Turns out it was when I stopped using this. Witch Hazel has been shown to be very healing for the skin. It's very anti-inflammatory. And so I think that was keeping some of the irritation that I was experiencing between using all these anti-aging actives from showing up in my skin. And I think that's why I was having the enlarged pore problem. So I am back to using this to keep my pores minimized and I'm finding that it really is working quite well for that. So my next step is to put on my prescription retinoid product. I'm using the generic tretinoin. The one that I'm currently using is the 0.1%. It took me three years to get up to this strength. I started at the 0.05% strength. You only need a pea size amount of this. More is not more. Uh, less is more with this because you don't want to cause that irritation. It will make your skin look older. So a pea size amount, I rub it between my two fingers, then I dot it around my face. And whatever's left, I put a little on my chest and a little on the backs of my hands. I would like to be able to put it on my neck. Unfortunately, 
my neck really can't take it, it's too sensitive. I use an over-the-counter retinol there, which I'll show you in a second. When I first started with it, I didn't put it under my eyes, I didn't put it by the sides of my nose, I didn't put it around my mouth. And I waited 20 minutes between washing my face to apply it. Now that I've been on it for four years, I put it right up underneath my eyes. I still do not put it on my eyelids. I still don't put it at the corners of my mouth, but I do put it on my upper lip and everywhere else except my neck. The chest and backs of hands, it's very important to put all your anti-aging actives on those places as well because they need anti-aging just like everybody else. I have videos on how to start using Retin-A without irritation, my before and after, my one year check-in, my two year check-in, my three year check-in, so you can see everything. Everything will be in the description box below the video if you're interested in looking at those videos as well. Then the next step in my uh, routine is that I go in with my CeraVe Retinol Serum. This is called CeraVe Skin Renewing Cream Serum, and this is Retinol, which is the over-the-counter version of tretinoin or retin-a and i use this on my neck i also spread some on my chest because where i put that you know retin-a very small area and then i also put some on the backs of my hands so then uh, right after i do that no waiting in between steps i use the mad hippie face cream um, this is a great face cream that contains peptides, acai, argan oil, resveratrol. It also has niacinamide, one of my favorite anti-aging active ingredients. And if you want to know what niacinamide can do for your skin, go check out the morning skincare routine. I talk all about it there. So I do one pump of this and I spread that all over my face, my neck, my chest, and the backs of my hands as well. Previously, I had used the Olay Regenerous Micro Sculpting Serum. I found that when I would put this on and then put this on after, sometimes these two would actually kind of do that balling and pilling thing, or this would sit on the surface and kind of be white and patchy. Because it only happened like you know every once in a while but sometimes it would and I was so surprised that these two products which are made to work together would have that effect. So I've been using this for probably seven years and I'm so sad to say goodbye to it but you know what I really don't need both and I do find that um, this plays much better with this. I don't get that balling and pilling, I don't get the this sitting on the surface and then I follow that up with my Olay Regenerist Micro Sculpting Cream. I do still use and love this. It's got the niacinamide, the hyaluronic acid, it's got a peptide in it. Um, it is just a lovely cream for overnight. It's a little heavy for the day. But then I do have two other things that I use before I go to bed just to keep my lips nice and moisturized overnight. I'm still using the Eucerin Aquaphor uh, Healing Ointment. This is the original. I just slather that on the lips before I go to bed and that keeps my lips um, feeling nice and moisturized all night. And then for my eyelashes and eyebrows, the very last step I do is I put on my Lash Growth Serum. I'm currently using Revitalash. I've been using this for about a month and a half. It has been working great. My eyelashes are growing again. My eyebrows are uh, growing again. So if you have sparse lashes or sparse brows because of the aging process, go ahead and give this a try. It is kind of spendy, but it does work. It's not prescription. You can just get it you know, over the internet and stuff. And I'll put a link to that below as well as everything else in the information box. So that is my complete evening skincare routine. And of course I always need to talk about sunscreen even in my nighttime skincare routine because using retinoids you really need to use the sunscreen during the day so make sure that if you're going to do this at night that you add a sunscreen into your day regimen as well because otherwise you'll be just undoing all the good that you're trying to do with the retinoid. So you know that skincare is my favorite topic and I could go on and on talking about it forever but like I said in the beginning I'm trying to keep this video a little bit shorter so if there's any questions that I didn't answer please check out the AM skincare routine. Thanks so much for watching I really appreciate your time and I hope you found it helpful and informative. So I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.